Hi everyone, this is Leisure Bree from the Human Workshop Collective. Recently I've released Live in Space, a hybrid video slash mp3 net EP. This tutorial will be covering the basics of the live set I use for the recording, including a couple of insider tips on the effects use. The idea for Live in Space came to me while working with Tonefilm on the Node 8 live set in 2008. I previously had a wide gap between the live and the radio version of a track. The live versions were built out of loops cut from the original track and it was a lot of work making sure that the live arrangement of the song was performed correctly. On the Node 8 setup, me and Tonefilm started to split up the songs into multiple audio tracks but at the same time made sure that the original buildup of the arrangement stayed intact. This way we could focus a lot more on the use of effects and tricks while the arrangement more or less played itself. I started using Ableton Live in 2005 for a live recording workshop on the Dutch Lowlands Festival. And I've been using it ever since for both live as well as composition software. It enables you to trigger a large range of samples on the fly while at the same time having full control of routing and effects. My effects chain is mainly built up out of standard Ableton effects since they usually have a very low latency and is finished off by Native Instruments Fast Effects, part of the Electronic Instruments collection and an external Korg Chaos Pad 3. For control of the MIDI parameters in Ableton, I use the Behringer BCF 2000 fader module, the Novation Launchpad and a Behringer BFC 1010 foot pedal. I very much love the BCF 2000 fader module for its steady feel and automated faders. I bought this baby in 2004 and it has never failed me and has always been a joy to work with. I've always loved to collaborate with other musicians, somehow it always seems to bring out the best in me when I work with other people. Besides my own tracks, Live in Space features collaborations with Human Workshop Space Specialist Dirk Koistra, VVVV Live Motion Graphics Expert Tone Film Yo. and German techno producer Andy Ruder. Hi. A studio version of track 8, Gentle Giants, will soon be available on the upcoming Hopscotch Divergence LP. Both Gentle Giants and Fred 1 are also available as full-time music videos done by our Cinema 4D Master Equiloud Ooh. on YouTube and Vimeo. For more information about any of these projects, check the video description link. Alright, now for a short demonstration of what the setup can do. I'll just play around with all the controls so you can get an impression of what's possible here. Instead of creating a whole bunch of audio clips for every audio track, I thought it was a better idea to just render the entire duration of a track and then afterwards split it up into parts of 16 bars. As you can see here, every clip on this audio track is the same file, but the loop region determines its length. This way each song only uses 5 audio files and it's easy to keep a clear overview on everything in case you need to migrate your project. Ableton enables you to say what should happen if a clip is at its end and in most cases I have the play next attribute selected in the clips actions menu. For every song only the last row of clips is set to play other so a random clip from the track will start playing as soon as the song comes to an end. 
This might sound a little dangerous, but in most cases it revives the song in a spectacular and unforeseeable way. As you can see here, I split the arrangements up into five audio tracks in which I first grouped and then rendered all of the single audio tracks from the original radio mix of the songs. Here's the synth, the background instruments, the bass, the drums and the rest of the percussion. I can mute each track individually, control its volume, and determine whether it goes to send one or send two. Sends are very important since they route the audio either to the fast effects chain or to the chaos pad. It's a bit tricky to get the audio signals correctly routed in volume as well as latency, but if you use a click track as a test on both signals, it'll be as easy as one, two, three. The fast effects has been around for a while now, but has luckily been re-released in an updated version as a preset along with Reactor 5 so it's no longer necessary to use old crappy cracks in order to get it to work. The effect features a brilliant loop module with a real-time stretchable loop, a great granular effect, a real-time reverse, and some other effects which are good but I don't use. The fast effects has the unique feature of a double EQ-based dry-wet system, configured to make so that all the highs get wet but the lows get just a little. I do this to avoid crazy bass explosions when using the loop or the granular effects. I just like it when the bass stays steady, I guess. As with the Chaos Pad track, this one has a beat repeat of which the interval and the pitch are controllable. I use these a lot. Also, I have four delays on this track, which are controlled by the Behringer FCB 1010 foot pedal. I have two before the fast effects, one without feedback, so it basically just delays the track an X number of beats. And one with the spread stereo and feedback, so I can reduce the fast effects impact, which is next in the chain. After the fast effects, I have my main delay, which I use all the time. It has both the feedback and the dry wet automated, so I can always get a long feedback delay on the fly in case the sounds from the arrangement run out. After that, I have the filter delay, from which I automated the time. This enables me to create reverse and slow down effects. Now to the chaos pad output. One of the two sends leads to a direct output which comes back into the sound card after passing through the core chaos pad effects module. Of course one could use any kind of outboard effect on this track as long as the effect has the possibility of passing through the signal clean when required. Right, so there's a beat repeat on this track as well which has the interval and the pitch automated. This is especially good in case I want to sample something repeated and pitched down on the chaos pad's internal sampler. I hooked up the Chaos Pad's MIDI clock to Ableton by using the MIDI output of the Behringer BCF2000, so not only the effects but also the sampler are always sharp. And with always I mean most of the time, since the Chaos Pad tends to lose track of the sync of the sample player after about 100 bars. However, the Chaos Pad is a great tool and virtually unmissable in any decent live setup. Not only the effects are great, but so is the sampler, and both are very intuitively navigatable and usable. 
please come and sponsor me, Korg. Now for you dudes at home. I created a live arrangement including the actual audio files of the track Basis X for download along with this tutorial. I created the file using Ableton Live 8.2 so you'll need a version 8.2 or higher in order to open it. I ported the MIDI controls of the synths to keys 1 to 5 on the keyboard as well as the letters Q, W, E, R and T for the mutes of the audio channels. Also, I created macro controls for most of the effects I use, so you can easily convert them to your own MIDI controller. If you are the owner of Reactor 5, you will also be able to use the Fast Effects 2. You will need to set the outputs of audio channels B out and A out to the respective audio channels of your sound card. Also, if you want to record the set, you will need to set the input of audio channel Rec KP to the inputs in which you've plugged your outboard's effect outputs. In my case, the external in 3.4. Right, that about wraps it up. Don't forget to download an mp3 version of my album on our website, subscribe to our channel, and if you've enjoyed this live set, don't forget to have a look at the video versions of B-Film Live at Node 8 and B-Film Limited Live at My House. Goodbye now, have fun, see you later.